Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So here I just want to compare Wizard Thaumaturge versus Arcanist in single target damage. Which should you be using to beat up those bosses the best? Now just be aware that Thaumaturge did get some damage reductions recently, especially with Arcane Singularity triggering glowing flames and Enchanter's Hex, and so their multi-target damage has gone down a bit. But that does not really affect single target damage. But what does is the change to critical conflagration. You lost 10% crit severity. But in all honesty guys, that should not be a problem. Still, using critical burn, you should be able to maximize all of your stats out, just as you can see here. The only real damage loss you should then have is the difference between Frigid Winds and Critical Burn. And to be honest, the difference is next to nothing because Critical Burn is giving that extra damage to your smolder of a multiplicative 25%. And so if you're going Frigid Winds, you miss that and you just gain a small damage boost, which does not go to all of your abilities. It does not go to, say, your mount power. And it works in weird ways with some powers, like not working properly with Icy Rays and just not giving you the damage boost you might think it should. So you just go with Critical Burn and you can still very easily get all of your stats to 90% while in combat, especially with team buffs. This is just solo, possible alone. However, we need to compare the, still the damage of Thaumaturge to Arcanist. You may have heard that, yeah, Arcanist was underperforming a bit and that is pretty much the case in most situations. The reason why Arcanist can do very well is because it can leech off a Thaumaturge you have in the group, their Smolder ability, allowing them to gain all that Smolder damage without actually having any of that on Arcanist. They don't have the Smolder mechanic here like you see Thaumaturge does. So you're gaining that like 10% extra damage while running with a Thaumaturge. But let's have a direct comparison with all of my tests. I done a lot. Well, this is what we end up with, comparing the different setups you can use on Thaumaturge and Arcanist. You can see the different powers, the feats and features used, and somewhat of the rotation there. Ultimately, Thaumaturge comes out on top, as you can see, with that nice high 1.28 million in counter dps then you have thaumaturge with say chilling presence instead of orb of imposition then you have arcanist which does not do so badly but does fall behind a bit because it doesn't have just the raw damage as thaumaturge has however with a thaumaturge like we said buffing you it can perform even better then thaumaturge with ray of enfeeblement it's going to be very good with team support. You'll want to have one person in a trial group using this if you've got a bunch of other magic damage dealers, but you will lose out on a bit of damage as you see there. You can use Arcanist with say Ice Knife and the Alacrity feat, that's viable, but you will lose some damage as you can see between the different Arcanist uh, setups there. And then using, let's say, Step Above Mastery versus Elemental Reinforcement in terms of the Ice Knife uh, setup didn't really matter. But I will say Step Above Mastery is pretty much a must-have if you're going with Arcane Empowerment because it gives you 10 stacks, which makes your Entangling Force have basically 900 magnitude, hitting six times for 150 magnitude. And that's all buffed up by Orb of Imposition as well, and it just definitely better when you can cast that encounter power more often with arcane empowerment but ultimately yeah that is all the comparisons i just want to show you then my data logs of that and some rotations of the best setups so we go to let's say thaumaturge the best setup for that would be right here with all of these abilities and feats just be aware of relative haste versus smoldering recovery Basically, relative haste is a minuscule bonus. I wouldn't worry so much about it. And if you want to make sure you have your daily power for every single artifact call, it can be very good to have smoldering recovery. Especially if you're also in mixed fights where you might be using a multi-target daily power instead. That way you want to be using your daily power a bit more often. Then 
it can be even better to have this. So that would be the setup you'd go with and definitely have that rhyme fire weaving instead of directed flames because you want to have that debuff effect. And again, we have compared with, let's say, directed flames versus rhyme fire weaving. And yeah, it goes from the best performing setup to the worst. Just be aware of how the rotation is with this. You do want to start things off with your scorching burst on your boss to activate that smolder. And then we're going straight into the artifact called encounter powers, daily power, mount power, and then using two encounter powers at the end of the artifact hall there because of the cooldown reduction from tacticians. You can see on the bottom right there, we have our name, we have our damage we've done, and then we have the DPS. So we're at like 2.5 million counter DPS. That's dropping drastically now because we're moving away from the artifact call and all that time is adding up. DPS is damage over time. So the longer the time and the less damage you've done, the lower DPS you'll have vice versa. So otherwise on thaumaturgs, it's fairly straightforward. You're just using your encounter powers when they're off cooldown. And that's really it with this setup. And so it makes it nice and simple. You play it ranged. One thing to note is you do want to use one magic missile in between the cooldown of repel, just to make sure you always have those five stacks. So you get that uh, extra 150 magnitude hit on entangling force. Now here we're going in the artifact call again same story with that rotation you are making use of tacticians with being able to cast two of your encounter powers again after you've cast the daily power one thing you can do though is optimize chilling cloud and magic missile by basically just doing the first two hits of chilling cloud one hit of magic missile first two hits of chilling one hit of magic missile that can be a little bit faster than let's say doing the three full hits of chilling cloud where you have that third hit it takes a lot longer i just haven't found it very friendly to do but it can be something you can learn over time to maximize a little bit more damage output again be aware of the smolder and how we have that triggered with scorching burst that's not really feasible if let's say you're against a boss which is going to phase a lot you can just use the scorching burst at will or you can just go with the critical conflagration class feature and not worry about that and then still have the magic missile to alternate with clear chilling cloud and just to make sure you have the five arcane stacks to make sure in time your forces dealing maximum damage can be pretty important so you can see our encounter dps 1.25 million here but that's going to spike back up again as we get to the next artifact call i do all of these tests with four artifact calls that's over the course of just over three minutes against this boss dummy here. Make sure he has enough HP, of course, by setting his ratings. We have it set to 20,000 as per my DPS test. And I talked about that a bit more in my recent video about, yeah, uh, are you high DPS? Basically, how to test your damage. And you can also do that for consoles based on a chart and your timing. So this is the last artifact call here with the daily tacticians mount and using those in counter powers again and then we stop the damage test and that's how we get our dps and we have 1.28 million in counter dps as we see with the parser just here also in the bottom right and we do that exact same test with all of the other power setups and in each power setup we're always making sure that our stats are at that 90 percent maxed out and i will compare our other classes and also make sure that their stats are also maxed out so that we can get an even playing field in terms of damage output and we are using the other bonuses here like Minsk, Neverwinter Night, and Batiri as the damage buffs, which we'll also use on all the other classes too. So we also compare that versus Arcanist, also getting all those stats maxed out. Now again, the damage log for Thaumaturge is right there, as we can see in the chart here as the DPS, because we look at the encounter DPS. You can see the time, the amount of damage we dealt, and that just equates to damage per second. You can see the hits of those abilities. We might have been able to squeeze out a little bit more encounter DPS if Golden Touch did not fail to critically hit that one time. Just means this thaumaturge could be 
even slightly better. I might want to retest a few more times and get that at 100%, but nonetheless, it is still the top performing test I did. This was the test with the chilling presence, just a little bit less damage, but we did get all the hits there. This was the test here with the chilling presence, the 1.23 million encounter DPS, so you definitely lose noticeable amount of damage using that instead of orb of imposition and then if you were to use let's say ray of enfeeblement you end up with just a 1.21 because you lose all that damage that you'd gain via if you had chill strike and then also having icy rays on tab but it is very good to run that power for team support increasing your team's damage especially if you're a newer player and aren't as experienced or don't have as min max to build if there's other wizards in the group i highly recommend using this to buff them up and finally on thaumaturge if you were to use directed flames you will see your damage go down pretty significantly without that debuff your smolder damage will go up a little bit we have ryan fire smolder just there but not by a whole lot and so you miss all the damage of those hits being as high now jumping over to arcanist the best setup again that i found here is yeah you can have your ray of frost there as your at will and then you want to have your disintegrate here and your arcane conduit with then those other abilities there daily power of course in arcane empowerment and then cost features you want your storm spell here an orb of imposition and generally you want to go with your spell twisting to get more action point regen a sailing force you can use snap freeze if you have another wizard otherwise Basically, when you get the max stacks of chill on your target, you won't deal any damage with this anymore because you're not applying a new stack of chill. It's just bugged, I guess, and it doesn't work properly like that. You want to go with chaos magic, your striking advantage, and your step above mastery. This, again, gives entangling force that extra 150 magnitude damage because of those extra mastery stacks. With that setup, as we see all here, we end up with that data log. So yeah, disintegrate, dealing an absolute ton of damage. In terms of the gameplay, we start things off with the artifact call, then use our conduit and our encounter powers with then our empowerment, then our encounter powers, throw in our mount power there as well, and just using Ray of Frost as soon as you have like a split second without, uh, your encounter powers off cooldown yet and that gets you the the spell twisting to get the action points but yes then it's just everything when it's off cooldown and you will get some triggers here and there and you might get a trigger to get a lot of action points with quick action there and so you might be able to squeeze out a second daily power with your full rotation. So using a, another daily power between the artifact calls will depend on the content, what time is between artifact calls, and also then your action point regen. You might want to spec a little bit more into action point regen and then be able to do that and then be able to squeeze out that bit of extra damage. But it's just not as reliable. You might end up using your daily power, not at, end up getting a quick action proc and end up losing a lot of damage. But you have a lot of bursts as you see that there with our encounter DPS spiking. This is another artifact call that spikes back up to 1.5 million and yeah. That's just combining empowerment with tacticians and then its own cooldown. And you end up with at least three sets of each encounter power cast during the artifact call. Some of them like disintegrate and repel. You can even cast four times during an artifact call within that 10 seconds. Just, yeah, it's pretty good. It just doesn't have the maximum damage output as say Thaumaturge has. However, again, when you do run with a Thaumaturge, you can leech off smolder damage. Not really leeching, but you're sharing the smolder damage with them. You're ending up receiving smolder damage, which is weird, contributing to your own damage, which ends up you dealing a bit more. And so you would be then pretty on par with the Thaumaturge in that regard. And then depending on the content, if you can squeeze out a second daily power in between, you could maximize that even further. You just don't have the debuffs like Thaumaturge has with Ramfire Weaving. So your damage on, let's say, your mount power is not getting buffed up as much. And so, yeah, 
you also have a bit of RNG with what's triggered and when, and you can't rely on that so much with, say, a sailing force and chaos magic. So it's a bit of fun. It does pretty well. It's pretty competitive, to be honest. It's just not as easy to play. And here we're going to approach to the last artifact call. You can see our DPS there. It's a bit more burst orientated than, say, Thom don't have as much damage over time because you don't have say the smaller damage unless again you're with a thaumaturge where you can get that from them but yeah in terms of what the devs have said with regards to that they said they pretty much have it intended and they're not going to change it so here's the last artifact call and counter powers arcane empowerment to counter powers and we can throw in our mount power and use a few more encounter powers just before the artifact call ends and that is is the dps test and we're at that 1.218 million encounter dps as we see in that data log again that's the chart and how it ranks in like third place there a good bit behind thaumaturge in that regard but still pretty competitive when you look at that overall it's not that big a deal i guess but definitely if you're a newer player i would just stick with thaum it also has more reliable multi-target damage with glowing flames as well. But the other setups I did try on Arcanist was to go with Ice Knife and then also switching to Elemental Reinforcement as that will give your encounter powers a bit more of a buff, but you lose all those Arcane stacks. And that works, right? It's easier play style. You will just be using the Alacrity feat there and end up being able to cast ice knife and then all your encounter powers again because the cooldown with this plus tacticians makes it very easy to make 100 percent sure you're casting those encounter powers twice it's just you're only going to be able to then cast encounter powers twice rather than three to four times during the artifact call as you would with arcane empowerment so you definitely miss damage by going that method to be honest, you may as well just go with Thaumaturge then if you want that big hit Ice Knife. But you can see the log there with the Ice Knife setup. That's the setup for it as well. It's literally just using the Alacrity feat instead of spell twisting. One area where Arcanist can excel is if you are taking full advantage of spell twisting and getting lucky with Chaos Magic to get extra action point regen. Having a few other areas of action point regen you can be casting, again, Arcane Empowerment twice during a full rotation. And so you can do a little bit of extra damage there. Just it's up to you to take that gamble on how much you want to invest into your character in Action Point Regen. Overall, both Paragons don't perform too badly. I will compare versus other classes, make exact same tests on those other classes, and we can eventually rank all the damage dealers with regards to this sort of a test with single target damage. And we can see what's kind of the baseline of those. Again, it will depend a lot on content, your abilities and how well you know mechanics and whether you're ranged or melee and whether those mechanics punish either or more or less. Time on target can ultimately be the biggest thing that causes you to lose or gain damage along with perfecting your timing during the 10 second window of an artifact call so hopefully this was somewhat insightful again the comparison thaumaturge versus arcanist on the wizard and it's up to you really what you should be using but make sure you're using a good setup and if you just want to go for the top of the charts pain giver thaumaturge is definitely the way to go right now once again a massive thank you to all of these channel members for their added support and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now